Now, one of the more controversial aspects of this year's U.S. election campaign has been a series of new laws that make it harder for some people to vote. Dozens of states across the U.S. have passed laws that could restrict voting. The Democrats have accused Republicans of trying to block legitimate voters. Republicans say they're just trying to stop fraud. John Hendren reports from Ohio. For Teresa Sharp, the outrage came by mail. Seven letters from the local election board saying someone had challenged her entire family's right to vote. I'm like, how can somebody challenge my right to vote? A conservative group called the Ohio Voter Integrity Project complained the Sharps, all Democrats, were illegally registered at a vacant lot. The letters were sent to that same address where their house has been standing for 67 years. They're trying to scare folks not to vote. That's what I think because they don't want Obama in. The Republican-led efforts have spanned the U.S. in the name of voter integrity. Democrats, including the president, have another phrase for it, vote suppression. We should be thinking about ways to make it easier for folks to vote, not uh, to make it harder for folks right. to vote. The effort is especially strong in key swing states like Ohio. In Lancaster, Ohio, so-called voter integrity groups tried to strip voting rights from 109 people. The local election board investigated and rejected challenges to 107. Two were dead. The Ohio Voter Integrity Project did not respond to our interview requests. Billboards in poor black neighborhoods threaten jail terms for voter fraud. 33 states, nearly all led by Republicans, have passed laws with strict new rules requiring voter identification, adding new costs the poor can ill afford. The ID laws may be common in other countries, but here they remind many of the days when riots broke out over ID laws and taxes at the polls that kept blacks from voting. We do have a history of, in this country of poll taxes being used as a way to prevent African Americans from voting. And if the ID itself costs money, then it is very similar to a poll tax. In the strictest states, 11 percent of eligible voters lack the proper ID, according to a New York University study, especially blacks, Hispanics, and the elderly, who tend to favor Democrats. Here at the polls, it's not clear the efforts to purge voter rolls have found much evidence of fraud. It's also not clear how many legitimate voters are too discouraged to come here at all. Teresa Sharp says 94 voters were challenged the day she made her case to the elections board, but few showed up. I didn't see no evidence of 94 people. All I saw is the evidence of seven people, you know? And I wasn't going to let them mess with me or my children. If anyone was trying, it didn't work. The election board approved Sharp's registration. She and every member of her family voted early for Barack Obama. John Hendren, Al Jazeera, Ohio. Well, James Braxton Peterson is a political analyst from Lehigh University, joining us live from Philadelphia. Thank you so much for being with us. Just give us an idea of how significant this trend has been. Are there enough new laws that could tip the balance of this election? This is extremely significant. Many leaders in America think of this as the most important civil rights issue of, the of this current moment. There are a number of different tactics that have been used in the effort of voter suppression, including Republican state legislators in creating all these voter ID laws, including the billboards um, that you see threatening fraud. Uh, there have been some groups on the right, uh, on the right wing of the Republican Party who have been organizing these so-called poll watchers, which are really more like voter intimidators that are going to be on site. And so when you look across at all these different tactics, what you see is there's been a concerted effort to disenfranchise those voters who would most likely be voting for the Democratic Party. Are all these new law proposals and uh, uh, tactics that you've been talking about all being generated by the Republican Party? For the most part, the overwhelming majority of them are. When you look at all of the voter ID laws are organized by either Republican state legislators, Republican governors, or both. Um, when, we, when we dig behind this or dig into the surface or beneath the surface of these billboards that we see in different inner city communities, those are also right-leaning and right-wing groups that are organizing them, as are the poll watchers. And so, and so it does seem to be political right on its outset. And, and even, if, even if it's not, the end result is, is that the preponderance of voters that are being challenged, whose IDs are being asked for, whose registrations are being challenged um, are, are, are Democratic voters. And so the result, I think, requires us to address it from the political angle as well. Well, if it is, as you say, then why am I not hearing an outcry of protest, not only from the voters who have been disenfranchised, but by the Democratic Party? 
Well, we certainly, we've heard some outcry. We've had uh, Attorney General Holder has been investigating. In fact, uh, he challenged these, some of these state policies in Texas, Florida, uh, and worked with folk and worked with different groups in the, in the state of Pennsylvania. We've had some big victories. Ohio's, Ohio was able to reinstate its early voting. Um, the Pennsylvania voter ID law was, was, was actually struck down. Um, people in Pennsylvania do not have to show their ID uh, in order to vote. So we've had some victories. And you've seen leaders in the Democratic Party, as far as leaders on the left, like uh, Reverend Al Sharpton and others, who have said, that, listen, and they've organized around this, we've got to stop the disenfranchisement and the voter suppression efforts that are going on around this presidential election. Is there an element of naivety in the Democratic Party? I mean, after all, this, th none of this is particularly new, is it? Uh, in uh, John Hendron's package there, we hear about the history of all of this. And my recollection from the 2000 elections was um, Catherine Harris in Florida purging voter polls, uh, Tom DeLay in Texas a couple of years later redistricting. Wow, right. I mean, th th this goes on all the time. That's right. Listen, I mean, this is, you're, and it's not, it's not naivete. I think some of it is just disbelief that some of these things go on in plain sight. But you're right. If we, we go back to 2000, if you look at the last decade and start to put some of these different stories together, you look at what happened in Ohio in 2004, what happened in Florida in 2000, and then you put that in the context of these voter ID laws, then you can start to see how sinister some people might begin to think of these efforts. At the end of the day, we need to be moving towards increasing franchisement. We need to be moving towards getting more more people to participate in the process, not trying to block folk from voting. But here's the thing, and here's what's at the core mm. here. The base of the Republican Party has been shrinking for some time, and the Democratic Party's base, especially amongst African Americans, people of color, Latinos, has been growing for some time. Um, and so in that environment, I think we're seeing some folk on the right take some desperate measures to try to limit what Democrats can do, especially at the All presidential right. level this year. Very quickly then, uh, how likely do you think it is we're going to end up with a, a problem situation here? I mean, uh, people have already floated, uh, only on the margins, obviously. The idea of a, a dead heat tie in the Electoral College between these two candidates is something like this going to lead us back to 2000 and something that takes us to the Supreme Court for a decision? I don't think that we're going to have any kind of electoral tie. You, there's a slim chance of the uh, uh, popular versus electoral split. But I don't. no matter what the decision is on November 6th, I can guarantee you there are going to be a lot of people complaining on November 7th. That is how the, this thing is divided. That's how it's shaping up. There, no matter how you cut the pie, on November 7th, there will be some Americans who will be upset with where this, the direction of the country is going and who's the president of the United States. I suspect so. James Braxton Peterson, thank you very much indeed for joining us from Philadelphia.